Hello everyone, Desert Gold here. Just uh, decided to put a quick video together here. Uh, I was on YouTube, just kind of looking around, and came across uh, one of these uh, videos on reloading and crimping. Um, some things that I wanted to touch base on real quickly with regard to uh, reloading. Um, this individual has got a video where he's uh, discussing the uh, the factory crimp die and um, its use with the 40 Smith and Wesson. <coughs> um, some of the things that he's uh, showing are almost dangerous. Uh, and this can be uh, demonstrated in actually one of his videos where he actually blows up his uh, Glock and has the uh, idea that it had to be a uh, faulty barrel from Glock that was missed in um, quality control. I don't know about you, but uh, I have yet to see clock have a quality control issue um, very often um, there's a number of things that he's doing that um, I had uh, questions with and I actually posted a comment on his video which he deleted and I uh, thought that that uh, even if he didn't care for the comment that some of the things that I was say, saying in the statement were valid and might help other individuals um, make sure that they don't make the same mistakes. First of all, um, we'll address a couple of different types of uh, bullets. This is one of my reloads for a 45 ACP. Um, I'm using because I shoot this so often that uh, I try to find the best price on, on components for this caliber and I'll use Barry's bullets on that. Now Barry's bullets and Rainier, Rainier's bullets um, are what they call plated bullets. They're a plated jacket, not a real actual copper jacket, but a plated um, electroplating. So uh, it falls in between a lead hardcast bullet and a actual jacketed um, bullet, say like Hornady or um, spear or any of those so it's 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 jacketing is is in the middle there this is one of my tens that I reload this is a uh, spear gold dot 180 grain this is a jacketed bullet obviously it's a bonded core uh, this is One of my 454 Casual bullets. Again, a spear um, jacketed bullet. You might ask why would you concern yourself with the jacketing on a bullet? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is it dictates the uh, eventual power and speed that you want to end up with when you're doing your reload. For instance, if I'm loading a 45 ACP with a Barry's bullet, I will choose a powder and speed eventual velocity that um, will be conducive to that type of bullet. Um, for instance, I, I will not try to jack up the velocity on that so that it's over uh, 
1100 feet per second because you're going to start tearing the, the plating off of a bullet at those speeds. Whereas if I'm using a Hornaday, you can start looking at the plus P power loads and plus P power um, powders or burn rates. Now, uh, the second thing that he is um, discussing in the video is uh, crimping. Now, the amount of crimp that you would put on a straight wall round like this is just enough to take the bell off of the case that you put on during the first stage or second stage of your um, loading uh, depending on what, what type of press you're using. These do not, the 40 Smith & Wesson, the 10, the 45 ACP, all these straight wall cases do not require a, a tight crimp. They, they require a mild taper crimp. Pull the bell off of the off of the case that you put on and a mild pressure against the the uh, the bullet itself. No rolled crimp. Now the exception to that obviously is the 454 Casul. I'm going to see if I can get close enough so you can see this has no crimp on it. This is a 10 mil. This is one of my rounds that I, I use and you'll see there's no crimp on it. This round uh, chrono's in at about 1300 feet per second. No crimp, no no change of seating depth in, in the, the round itself. Now, when you get into really extreme recoil rounds such as the Kasul, uh, the 460, the uh, 500 Smith & Wesson, you are going to need a, a uh, rolled crimp. And that's why on those caliber bullets, you'll see a cannula in, in the, the bullet itself. If you look closely at this, you'll see the extensive crimp on that round. That is necessary given the recoil of this round to keep the the uh, bullet seated and that's why they have cannulas on on these these rounds and you will never see a cannula on a 40 round or a 45 round well with the exception of the uh, 45 uh, bullets that might be used in the um, larger calibers but for practical purposes the ACP will never have a cannula on it. Now, what what happens if you do crimp? Well, you might say, well, so what's the big deal? I'll, I'll put a crimp on, on all my bullets, and that way I know that bullet is seated properly. It won't move around. Well, there's a couple of issues with that. One, is if you're using a plated bullet like this, berries or veneer, that crimp is going to shred the thin plating off when you fire the round, exposing the lead as if you were firing a lead, lead bullet. Now, for the most part, if you've got a button pin cut barrel, that's, that's uh, mostly not going to be an issue but if you're using a Glock with its uh, cold hammered uh, polygon um, rifling you got a problem because that that's going to start letting real quick and um, for someone that is using a fast powder a tight crimp um, not doing any chrono work on velocities for their round and reloading that's why you blew your gun up. Now, uh, second, what is 
another reason that you don't want to over crimp a uh, straight wall case like 10, 40, sometimes even your, your 45 ACPs, uh, that is the headspace in the chamber off of their, uh, off of their case. If you have it crimped, if you have the end of the case rolled in too tightly, if it is supposed to seat on, on the case head, or on the um, chamber, if you've got it rolled in too tight, it's going to seat too deeply in that chamber. Seating is going to be different. Uh, pressures are going to be, uh, pressures and accuracy are all going to change. Um, you've just got a number of things that are occurring that shouldn't really um, be necessary for a straight walled case like these, these rounds. Um, in fact, if you were to just take, I don't presently have any factory uh, any factory uh, rounds at present uh, all of mine are reloaded but uh, if you just out of curiosity take any factory round for 40 uh, 45 well here here's this is Forty-five Winchester Ranger. All right. Look at the. There's no crimp on that round. Also, let's see if I have another. Spear gold dot from the factory. No crimp on that round. Just enough to get the bell off that they used in the initial loading process. If you have any doubts on what you're doing, get a factory round, look at it, use it as a visual reference. Uh, kind of Some of these loading experts on YouTube with a grain of salt because some of the stuff they're saying is actually quite sometimes dangerous. Um, that that's in a nutshell what I was trying to get out is that you cannot judge a crimp. This guy actually takes finger and pushes down on the round and then uses a caliper to see that the bullet hasn't moved. I don't know if you can see this but on on the 10 right where my thumb is is where the bullet dimple on the seat ends so from where my thumb is to the top is the 40 caliber bullet on this. Well, this is, it's a 40 caliber diameter, but this is in a 10, so. Um, that much of the case is holding the bullet. You putting any kind of crimp on it is gonna change how that bullet seats or sits in there with respect to recoil. You set the bullet in there properly, it's going to sit there until you fire it. Putting a heavy rolled crimp on it is doing nothing but changing how that bullet is going to chamber and how it's going to seat. So look around when you're getting into reloading as far as um, 
what you're going to do with the type of cases that you're going to be reloading, um, what kind of bullets you're going to be using, the components as far as powders, primers, number of times you're uh, going to be reloading your case, checking your case. I mean, this guy had uh, Glock smiles on his on his third and fourth round, fourth time um, reloading these cases, and his primers were being flattened, and he wasn't even paying attention to that. So you you start doing stuff like that and not taking a chronograph and checking the you know batch testing your your velocities to see where your pressures are and you're going to wind up ruining a gun sometimes even worse than that so felt uh, this needed to be said uh, given the fact that uh, this individual was unwilling to even leave a post up so that uh, other people could judge for themselves um, something I was trying to get across to help people be safe with with this as it can get out of control very quickly and very dangerously. Anyway, Desert Gold, uh, I'll talk to you soon. You guys have a good day.